Hello, good, good morning, morning everyone. everyone. Hi, good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? <laughs> Great. All right. Uh, good morning, everybody, especially uh, those with us right here in the presence. And also uh, those of you who are watching us through online platforms. Thank you so very much. Make sure you stay with us, you know, like throughout the show, throughout the live, because today it's a pretty hard to get opportunity because we get to find out more about the uh, medical knowledge. People spend a lifetime to study about this, but we'll be, you know, getting all this known right after this one hour live. So, so make sure you stay put with us, right? A very good morning once again, and thank you so much for spending time with us, taking time off the business schedule. I know today is a Saturday, pretty much of, you know, the rest, they, you know, been going out things and then uh, shopping, but you, you choose to, you know, like stay with us which is a great choice. My name is Christina Ng. I host for TV and radio. And today, I'm all yours because I'm hosting and also moderating this webinar, hybrid webinar for all of you, uh, you know, to talk about your hip and knee uh, with this topic, take control of your hip and knee pain, get active again. You know, no matter which age, I bet this is uh, one of the things and issues that uh, we're pretty much concerning in, all right? I'm well, Christina Huang Weizhen. Today, in the whole program, we hope you can be with us until the end. Because it's very hard to have a professional doctor come to the stage. Tell us about hip and knee. This is, I think, for the elderly, especially 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 for the el
professional in a way. So today's uh, Dr. Chua because um, he is like, like the first single surgeon in Malaysia, you know, that have 100 cases of robotic assisted joint replacements for his patients. And as far as I know, this robotic arm assistant technology have just arrived in Malaysia since last year. And he's already, you know, been doing 100 cases left. Imagine how many of us are having hip and knee problems in Malaysia. Terrible and also horrible at the same time. But um, very sad and unfortunate to say that it's pretty common, you know, among all of us right here, including me myself. Because Dr. was mentioning about how, how high my knee, my, my heels are and that yeah, might actually harm my hip and heel. So, so every country I have to get him up so that we can sit there, you know, to, to give us injuries to myself. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, please join me. Well, I welcome Dr. Chua to join me on stage. Dr. Chua, come. Just in case you would like to Google about him later on, make sure you get the spelling, right? Chua Hua Sen. Okay? Dr. Chua, come a little bit. Can I have the microphones, please? Thank you. Okay, okay, say hi to everybody. Doctor, Doctor I normally give us an impression of, wow, very serious. 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 Leave the, the comments, comments down below, below okay? Doctor, Dr. greet everyone. Hi, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thanks, thanks, Christina. All right. Thanks, Star, for having me here today. Mm. Yeah. I'm very, very happy to be here to, to share mm -hmm. with you all whatever that I'm passionate in, which is the hip and knee. Okay. Yeah. Actually, I have a, a lot of questions and curiosity of myself. You know, like, how can a doctor actually choose skip and me <laughs> in his profession? They have super interest in this, you know. But today we are talking about hip and knee pain. Actually, what are the causes of hip and knee pain? Because me, myself, sometimes I also feel like, you know, here pain, la, pain la, here and there. La. How can we spot that? And what, what are the causes? So, um, so, so essentially, hip and knees are big joints of our lower limb, right? Uh, and we, we walk all the time and we walk, we jump, we run, we always use our hip and knee. And there are many, many structures inside our hip and knee. Okay. And knee, for one, is one of the biggest joints in our body. There are many, many structures inside the knee joint. Mm -hmm. uh, you have ligaments, you have uh, cartilage, you have the tendons around it. You can have also meniscus, something, a special cushion inside the knee. So all these things, if you would get injured for whatever way in which some fall or overuse, mm. you wear and tear, you can get paid. And uh, uh, different, different uh, causes as well. Uh, so in hip as well, there are obviously ligaments around, the cartilage, the bone. So all these, whenever you get injury to all these part, you do get pain. And pain is a, is a little bit like a defense mechanism. So essentially, we, we, we feel pain, we have injury. Mm. Uh, it tells you that there's something that's not right. Ah. Your joint, yeah? In another way, it's like a signal. La. You shouldn't ignore. Once your body is like, uh, several parts of your body is, you know, like screaming, pain, you actually have to take note on that already. Yes. And people always say, right, whenever you have pain on joints, it's like some may hold you. If you never get it gautim right now, you get like much more suffering right after that. Very, very. Yeah. Now, so, essentially, I would always think, I mean, in, in Mandarin, we say, uh, uh, that you, you problem, face it. That's mm -hmm. probably the best thing to do. Uh, look, look out for it. Why is it that you are having this pain, right? Mm -hmm. And especially if you were to, you were doing all right, and then suddenly the pain come, and then it come with swelling or something like that. Then do seek help. And mm -hmm. we are here just to help. Like we are all professional. We put in a, a lot of our effort and time mm -hmm. into studying and to how to diagnose what are the pain. Okay. All yeah. right. So today we're talking about hip and knee. I bet uh, most of us, including me, myself, and those who are joining us today, we have uh, some of the uh, uh, patients.
that are watching at home that have been suffering, especially when they're banned, their walk, their run, right? I saw you guys nodding. Very good. You've got the very right first step to join us today because we have to on what, you know, like suffering or matters that we're having so that we know where to go on, you know, to get it done and to get it called right? And so today, Dr. Chua, can you tell us more about that? Some people, they actually, you know, relate hip and knee pain to arthritis. Is that, you know, so true about that? That is partially true, okay? Mm-hmm. Now, as, as, as we know, just now I said, inside our joint, there are many, many structures, mm-hmm. but arthritis simply means that it's an, uh, an inflammation joint. And osteoarthritis, to put it even more uh, specifically, mm-hmm. it's commonly happened, yes, true in hip and knee. And it simply means that it's a degenerative joint disease. When the joint gets old, oh. as we age, the more we use the joint, the wear and tear will come in. Mm-hmm. And you, you, you have the cartilage, first of all, the cartilage being worn out. After the cartilage being worn out, the next thing is that when you have bone on bone and the bone starting to wear out. Mm-hmm. And all this, uh, what we call osteoarthritis, it can happen commonly in knees and it can also happen commonly in hips. And all this, one of the most important uh, symptoms will be joint pain. Mm-hmm. And uh, sometimes you do come with joint pain as well as a little bit of swelling. And last but not least, when it becomes severe, then you get certain deformity as well. Mm-hmm. Huh? So uh, I'm sure many of you would have seen someone who is of elderly a little bit that you you have an O shape, we call the O shape of the knee. It is because ah. of this osteoarthritis of the knee, slowly as it becomes severe, mm. then, then the deformity will come in. Uh, mm. th- then it becomes an O shape. Okay, there's another type of osteoarthritis of the knee. Where it go, it becomes an X, we call it a knock knee. Mm-hmm. That is the other type. Uh, degenerative joint disease in the hip normally cause pain as well as potentially shortening of the leg. <gasps> feel that it's shortened. So right? people as short as I do get even shortened. That would be very tough. Oh, you're laughing at me, but that's very sincere. <laughs> that's what I'm worried also. You know, like I say, right, nowadays, you know, the trend and era has been changing. Uh, it's no longer a senior season. Citizens and me, if you will ask me, because youngsters, uh, people younger than I do, and even you know people like my age, we often you know like never really bother much about our health and our hip and knee, especially because we just do whatever we want: we go dancing, you know, we go swimming, hiking, running. Even if we have pain in some part of our bodies, we'll say, "Ah, yeah, it's okay. It's very normal. I must be. I never sleep really well yesterday. It's fine." And then the pain actually, you know, like remained two days, three days, one week, a month. And then we still, you know, with the same attitude. Ah, yeah, it's okay lah. Okay. But Dr. Chua, whenever we talk about hip and knee pain, many of us relate first. <laughs> it must be the weather. Is it something, you know, logical or not? That the weather would affect our joint pains? So, so it's, it's partly correct. <laughs> to, to, to a certain means extent. not really correct. Not correct, okay? Uh, doesn't now weather change the disease, okay? Mm-hmm. It does a feel towards your joint. Okay? In the cold let's say pre existing arthritis of the knee or the hip. Mm-hmm. In the colder weather, you do feel the pain a little bit more. You feel a little bit more stiffer. That mm. is potentially correct. But whether or not because of the cold weather, that's why I'm having arthritis is not true. Okay? Uh, that part, I, I, I must say. Okay? Mm, okay. Uh, can I actually phrase it this way? If you were like feeling pain somewhere, uh, then you were mentioning that, it must be raining, you know? Then it really rains, okay? But right after the rain, even until the rain stops, you still feel pain. It's really serious and severe already. Correct. Ah, uh, okay, correct. okay. So everyone, all yeah, okay. And then um, I also wonder because, like I mentioned earlier, we Malaysian, especially we humans, like whenever we're having pains in our joints or parts of the bodies, we'll say, "Yeah, it's okay. Very normal moments. Small cases. Do not take it too seriously. Don't get too kanjong. But to what extent of pain? 
and it actually gave us that hey, this is really serious. You have to go to the hospital. You have to see a specialist. Is there any, you know, ruler or measurements that we got to judge on this? So, so my advice to how we should uh, deal with our pain is mm-hmm. one, let's see whether or not this pain come about because of certain activities or something that you have done. Mm-hmm. Say, for example, you have done something a little bit more extreme that you have a little bit of pain. Mm. Now, the, the key point here is just a little bit of pain. It's not like the pain that you're not, not unbearable, okay? So, you do a little bit of fatigue. And fatigue may present as a little bit of pain. But mm. all this time, right? In actual fact, so s- small amount, a little bit, three days later, is completely gone off. Then that's number one. Number two, let's say because of certain activities, you fall or a little bit more extra, and the pain is so much that it's unbearable. Again, I do just now, pain is a defense mechanism. Mm. So when the pain is unbearable, I think it's time to seek help. This is number two. Now, third, if it has become chronic, what do we mean by chronic? That means the pain persists after two, three mm. days later. It's still there. Huh? Or it's associated with uh, those... For, for, for those of you who have had chronic pain, sometimes you realize that the pain is there and then it becomes very, very painful. Oh. It comes back down again. The pain is there a little mm-hmm. bit again. And then become very, very painful. So this is what we call a recurrent pain. If the pain keep coming, keep coming, keep coming from the same side, again, it is probably a sign for you to seek help. So these are the... the few advice that I can and can give mm-hmm. in terms of how do you deal with your pain. Okay. As a bonus question of to that, yeah. Um, we have this habit whenever we feel pain at joints, we we'll kick crack, kick crack, ayah, stretch here and there, should be fine to make it, you know, correct back again. Is it actually true things to do though? Is it the right things to do? Um, we actually at even more matters on that, right? Potentially <laughs> add more injury to it, to mm. be fair. Uh, yes, sometimes when, we are, when we're younger, you know, we like to crack our joints and everything. Mm. I think that's not too bad. It's not so much about pain. It's mm. just a little bit of discomfort Then you crack your joint and you feel like it's a little comfortable. That's okay. Mm. But when you have pain already, mm. it, it tells you that at the end, if you were to try to crack your joint or something like that, you may create a bit more injury, I would say. Okay. So it's probably not very advisable. Mm-hmm. So we always mention that it's pretty much better option to opt for you know your professional doctor that and specialist. Okay, talking about hip and knee pain, and Dr. Choa has been giving us some chat. I bet uh, many of us, including those at home, uh, watching us online, you feel like, oh, sailor, I really feel pain uh, from last month or uh, from that day or uh, here, there, there. But do all this pain actually, you know, um, need us to, you know, uh, urge for a much more serious treatment? In another word, surgeries. Do do every pain need all of that? Oh no, no, no. Um, make make no mistake. I think I think let's just just dive in purely into osteoarthritis per se, mm. which is our our topic here today. It's on to the degenerative joint. The mm. degenerative joint is also there are stages. Okay, mm. so. Different stages will have will entail different treatment. So okay. to us, when you come and see us, we will we'll see, we'll assess and we'll see what stages of disease that you are in. Mm-hmm. And there are many, many different uh, treatment modalities before we talk about surgery. Okay. Things like medication, mm-hmm. things like physics, things like, you know, if uh, somehow you feel that this particular joint is you the, the joint for a while. Uh, mm-hmm. Things like, uh, uh, I'm sure you all heard about it, things like injection, the HA injection, the gel injection, so to say. Uh, things a little bit like uh, radio frequency ablation for treatment. So these are all many, many modalities. Uh, 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 different, different ways you are trying to before we have surgery. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, uh, from my point of view, when my patient come and see me, I always assess them in terms of the the few factors. Number mm-hmm. one is in terms of the stages of the disease, mm-hmm. and different stages will entail different treatment. Will give you all the correct advice. 
And um, personally, I, I always think um, we, we, we always need to match the, the, the expectation of the patient mm. to, to what we can offer, right? What do you want? Mm. You see? So, so this, this, this particular so-called osteoarthritis or degenerative disease, it, it's, it's part of aging, right? We, we would think that I'm, age, I'm, I'm getting old, so what? I just deal with it, right? But uh, so, so if you say that I do not want to do anything about this joint and just keep dropping my, my, my activity of daily mm-hmm. living, keep dropping, keep dropping to until completely just sitting, not doing anything, mm-hmm. is it okay? I, I think it's okay if that's what you want. But, but personally, I passionately think that every single one of us should have our more mobility. Mobility is very, very important, especially as we age. As we age, if you can be mobile, then you can live your life. And when you can live your life, in fact, the, 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 the surrounding health and everything will come together mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Instead of you keep dropping your, your activity level, right? You keep dropping, keep dropping, keep dropping. And then one day you realize that, you know, you, by just sitting down, you also still feel pain. And by then, it probably be too late, right? So that's mm. what I think. Uh, we always cater to what you need, what you expect. We talk about it, we discuss, and then see what we can offer. Okay, thank you so much for the kind words. I think in other words, in short, it also means um, you really need to consult the doctor like personally, each and every one of us individually. Um, you know, like whatever that suits your friends doesn't mean it suits you. And whatever your friends are having doesn't mean you are having to. You know, your friends can be so lucky, but it doesn't mean we can be as lucky as possible, right? So the best thing is to consult the doctor and specialist as soon as possible since timing is the right one, like you mentioned. Don't wait until it's too late, until you, you know, like lie on the bed and can't do anything and you find it even difficult to, you know, move to the hospital itself. So uh, talking about these treatment options, right? Are there different types of surgeries, you know, um, accordingly to cure the hip and knee issues? There are a few different different surgeries in terms of uh, treatment for this kind of degenerative joint disease. Mm. So to, to start off, the, the, most, the first one that we can talk about is number one is arthroscopy surgery. We call it minimal invasive, mm. uh, just keyhole surgery, right? We can go in keyhole, have a good look. Sometimes certain part of the, the part where it is just, just starting to degenerate, we may help to patch it up a little bit. This is number one. Mm-hmm. And secondly, uh, uh, or last but not least, is, is talking about joint replacement. I'm sure every one mm-hmm. of you who are here would have already mm-hmm. heard about joint replacement before. We are going to d- dive a little bit more into joint replacement later. But in terms of joint replacement per se, um, and, and, and today is also the day where we want to bring to your uh, knowledge about the extra... Uh, new technology that we have brought into Malaysia, which mm. is the robotic assist joint replacement. So we we do we, we we used to do joint replacement for many many years, but now uh, I think the first joint replacement was put in uh, in the world about sixty years ago. Wow. And as 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 it goes, it become more and more advanced, more and mm. more advanced, more and more advanced. And uh, we we have done probably thousands of uh, uh, joint replacement with the con- so called conventional way, which is without the robotic help. And then slowly you move on to the next level, which is a computer navigated era where mm-hmm. we use computer navigation. And last but not least, this is the today we want to bring to your knowledge about this particular uh, latest advancement in technology is called a robotic assisted uh, joint replacement. Okay. Robotic arm <coughs> assisted technology sounds very new and fresh to us, but at the same time, very exciting. Would you like to you know, like hint, hint us a little bit? How can I actually help? Sure, uh, sure. So, so like, like in terms of uh, knee per se, let's, let's talk one by one. Right? Knee, in, in, in knee, we, we can have something we call a total knee replacement. That means the whole joint is already spoiled. We mm-hmm. change the whole joint. Mm-hmm. And we can also do partial knee replacement, which is only part of the knee where it's not so good, then we change part of the knee. Mm. Now, all these are made... Uh, uh, possible or more in control in our surgeon's hand because mm. of this robotic assisted surgery. Mm. Now, what entails a robotic sur- uh, assisted surgery? It, it's essentially, you, if you were to hear robotic, you would be thinking, oh my goodness, is it robot is going to just operate on me? So what's, what's the use of me seeing 
surgeon, mm. right? Mm. Now, robotic, robotic surgery essentially is assisted surgery. They come to the surgeon. They help us to look into which part of the bone that is not so good. We pre-plan and then do the surgery. We can dive onto it a little bit later, uh, deeper later. Mm-hmm. Okay, sure. All right. Talking about all this, right? I think um, it's pretty the right timer right now for us to invite some other guests to join us on stage because today it's really a pleasure because, you know, when we listen to a doctor, we usually got, you know, like more knowledge throughout the uh, issues and, you know, about the surgeries and professionally the knowledge is about it. But we also curious, is that really working? Like, you know, on the normal person? on the real humans. Today, we are having patience of Dr. Chow with us. And both of them, um, very sincerely, would like to share us more about the experience throughout the journey because they just had their hip and knee surgery so just not very long ago. Okay, right now, let me just invite both of them to come on stage. Okay, for all, may we have Datuk Kor Nam Ngam. Whoa, he actually did this robotic arm assisted uh, bilateral knee replacement surgery. Um, and right now it's in recovery or should I say it's like covering pretty much good and better and best way okay can we have you you know to join us on stage Dato oh he's like one of the first to do the surgeries and secondly we are also having Madam Wong to join us Madam come Madam Wong thank you so much for joining us Messi, uh, she just did a robot um, assisted hip replacement surgery, uh, like not very long ago, around three months ago. And right now, she's recovering pretty well. So, okay, can still walk in there. Le. Although she needs a little bit of sister. La. That one is because he wants to feed the VIP. He, he got someone to assist her. <laughs> okay, come. Let us greet the crowd first and also uh, all of our audience at home. Madam Wong, would you start first? Hi, hello everybody. Good morning to everybody Aww. and happy morning to Dr. Chua. I'm glad that I've been invited here to share my experience. Because I too much. Oh, very fast. Yes, too much, but I feel pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Can see from the face, right? Super ethic. And, and I like she actually put in. To happy oh, the smile smile coming up from her face what about you Dato greet the crowd a little bit uh, good morning <laughs> thanks to Christina so lively you know as, <laughs> as, as, as lively as my niece now <laughs> <laughs> that's a very good metaphor you see okay. I purposely actually come in from Sabah okay oh. actually I'm born in Johor but I, mm. I've been living in Sabah for a long time mm-hmm. I purposely come in Sabah to provide this testimony with serious thing should consider mm. a positive uh, uh, way forward in life. Mm. Uh, you see, when, when I had my knee surgery, uh, uh, way back to 2016 when I was playing golf, I stepped on a depression, I heard a clicking sound, and not knowing that I had torn a meniscus mm. and, and uh, soft out, and uh, up to Eight months ago, I had my total knee replacement for both knees. Mm. One knee, kena, the total weight shifted to the left of the body and the other knee also gave way. Uh, that's actually a result of compromising our, the way we stand, the way we walk. Mm. Okay. Wow, Dato, thank you so much. I mean, same goes to Madam Wong also. It's pretty not an easy thing, you know, to have the courage to come upon the stage actually to come upon the world, to show the whole, whole world, you know, what you've been experiencing. People normally feel shy. Not very proud. What? But you know, the more you share, you actually help more people. Because people always feel very curious and that's why they feel very hesitated, you know, to, 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 to urge and to, to take action for more uh, right and proper treatment. Thank you so much. And you kind of have, you know, the missionary soul today. <laughs> I have to save the world, save more people with hip and knee issue. Are we having any one of you right here who actually suffers from pain, especially on the hip or knee? Anyone? 
，偷偷地咁样举下手俾我知道，俾个眼神我都得，咁样。<笑> OK， gotcha。Actually me also <笑>。<laughs> all right, so I think uh, many of us, including our friends and family and relatives, we always suffer from that, lah. So right today, having both of our evidence with us here today, we actually can go from the very bottom, you know, from the stage one to the final stage where they got their surgeries done and uh, they are recovering right now. Let's go back to the you know throwback to the years uh, where. Both of you actually suffers from the pain, Madam Wong. Why don't we start with you first? Uh, since when you notice about your pain and how much that actually affected your lifestyle? Oh, really bad, really bad. Because very I bad, very start, bad. I start uh, <laughs> having the pain about three years mm -hmm. ago, but I don't know it was because of my hip problem. So I mm -hmm. thought it's my muscle problem. So I always, you know, uh. Take all kind of ointment, <laughs> counter pain, every mm. everything to rub Go your ball and all that. Uh, for both sides. <laughs> Actually, mm. initially, it was my right leg. So I have a pain. So it will affect my, my, my verse. I love to travel. Mm -hmm. I have my morning walk every morning in about an hour. I do my gardening. I play around with my grandchildren. But as time goes by, mm. my pain is terribly bad. I can't even walk up the side. I can't, can't crawl my leg. And I have a different putting on wearing out. And went to all kinds of um, think, uh, all kind of doctor. I go for acupuncture, chiropractic, orthopedic specialist, but it cannot give me a, a total relief mm. goes by. I have to inject gel or painkiller oh. until mm. one day the doctor refused to give me any gel. Mm. Because at the time the pain is really, really, really bad. I walk with a limb. From the one of the doctor took an X-ray and he told me my right leg is shortened by few cm. So I walk with a limb and my my husband always tease me. I walk like a goose. Uh, <laughs> it's really mm. bad because I can't carry my granddaughter. Okay. So they, they why the doctor, one of the doctor refused to give me any more jab. He said it will get worse. Eventually, my left leg will also affected because I rely on my left leg. Mm. I can even how beautiful my upstairs is. I cannot walk up. Ah. So I have no choice. So the doctor recommend me to Sunway, and my my husband check on Google without the doctor Chua, and mm. so happened some of our friend know him so well and strongly recommend. He's very famous. Yeah, <laughs> look at the shy face. <laughs> but he is really famous. Okay. Uh, uh -huh. So that's how I encounter and uh, mm. went to see Doctor Chua. I see. Thank you, Madam Wong. Your lun joy say so much, right? And also, thank you, Uncle, for joining us today. Thank you for staying there for Madam Wong also. You know, yeah. Oh, boy, you so sweet, leh. 突然之间被撒狗粮，有没有？哈哈哈，几甜蜜。Okay, like what Madam Wong mentioned earlier, I think that's pretty a bad and worse experience already. You know, uh, in order to accept jab. Is already something very worrying for all of us. Ha, that's a moil gang, right? Apata lagi when the doctor say, hey, I cannot, I cannot, I don't want to give you that already. Means things really went very severe and also serious already. And that's also how she found the choa, like she mentioned, recommended by friends, and they Google about it. And also at that moment, they see Dr. Choa, they actually, you know, like, um, uh, decided to go further for the consultation. Dr. Chua, do you still remember by that moment when Madam Wong came to you, how painful she was? Um, well, I, I, I have quite, quite a bit of patience, but I vaguely remember Madam mm. Wong walked in with, with, with uh -huh. uh, quite a bit of pain. Uh, she, she walked in and she told me say that uh, I, I actually have seen someone, x-rays mm -hmm. has been done, and that I have uh, hip arthritis. And I'm here to seek for advice. Mm -hmm. um, that was what uh, started off with the consultation. 
and I, I, I look at her, we examine a little bit, and look through the x ray again. Mm, and, excuse uh, me, in actual fact, <laughs> when I see Dr. Chua the town, I, I thought she said, no, not to worry, uh, no, no, no <laughs> surgery. Mm. So I was hoping for that. Mm -hmm. I was hoping for that because, uh, like, every, so we were so scared of surgery. Mm. So hopefully, no surgery. So he may give me some just to have a belief. Okay. Uh, but unlucky, he said, no, you have to do. <laughs> unlucky, <laughs> unluckily, in a way, you are lucky also. So you just came right on time, you know. If not, uh, even, I'm sorry, Madam Wong. I not only cannot jab you, I also cannot do surgery. Or Come on, say lah, okay? So you, you came through just on the right time. What about you, Dato? Still remember by the moment you mentioned back in 2016, you were having pain. How did that actually progress until you found Dr. Chua, your love of life? Okay, you see. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Mm. See, my situation is a bit different from her. Mm. I come from a, more a medical background. I, I'm basically a pharmacist by training. But whether pharmacies or whatever profession mm. in, nobody likes to go to a hospital, go under a knife. Mm. Agree? Yeah, I think there's always a fear, even for me for the matter. So when I had that problem, you see what then happened was that uh, with that little knowledge that I have and, uh, and besides also, I run my own private speech in Tawawa. Uh, I've got orthopedic surgeons, I've got surgeons, I've got guy working okay, with me. And the thing is, we always we think that tomorrow you're back. Mm. And then you started about what you should do. So I went for my gel jab like you, hyaluronic acid, a mm. uh, couple of jabs, and uh, until doctor tell me, if the jab cannot last more than six months, it's bad. But my jab only lasted three days. Then the pain comes back again. You have really chronic pain recurrent. And uh, on top of that, I went for PRP, you know, uh, enriched or rich uh, plasma mm -hmm. protein injection. Uh, I came here all the way to University Hospital through my friend, a professor. He did for me twice. Uh, covered a little bit, seems to be good, maybe for a short while, very short while. Then it becomes bad again. And the last one, you know what I did? I went for stem cell. Wow. Your level of cell. Mm -hmm. It's expensive, uh, but it doesn't matter. If the stem cell can do wonders for me, why not? So I said, well, that's the last resort. I did that. Again, not much of an effect. And then COVID hits Malaysia or hits. So for two and a half years, uh, I was only able to walk about 50 meters, miss 100 steps. I have to look for a place to sit down. I used to live a very active life. Mm. And uh, my job also, in a way, uh, doesn't allow me to to stand still or not do anything because there's always a lifestyle that I always enjoy. Uh, besides food, uh, that's why you have size, right? <laughs> okay. So then I told my orthopedic surgeon, he's a very good surgeon. I said, Dr. Fasli, can you please operate for me? So we, I've got a radiology unit there. The radio, radiologist and two of them concur that both my knees are equal. Equally bad. Mm. Equal one is very painful, the other one is still taller. Mm. He said, You must get both done. But my orthopedic uh, surgeon told me, uh, he has sort of uh, told mm. himself that he will not do surgery for his, his boss. So, what to do? So, I said, Can you recommend me? Mm. He said, Okay, you go to Sunway. So, I called up my way. Okay, a good friend of mine, Vasti Mead, and uh, three method, the conventional method, the, the computer method, and also we got the latest, the uh, robotic-assisted uh, method. So I said, well, robot is interesting. Okay, anything, AI, and all these are now coming on. So I said, why not? So I went to see Dr. Cho. So, uh, after reading through whatever they have said, he, he told me, never mind, go and get the x-ray done again. So mm -hmm. I did that. 
and confirm that both knees are bad. So he give me a choice. One knee or two knees, I say both knees. He said, very good. We do it one go because I... You see, the thought of going back to hospital many times, uh, I think it's mm. always not a very pleasant kind of thinking. Uh, because I I have a hospital, I see how patients uh, come in and out. We always want to give them a better life. And uh, I think uh, for myself, I think the same thing happens. Uh. Mm. You always have got this reservation that, number one, uh, how long is he? Uh, the, is it going to be pleasant or not pleasant? And Dr. Chua told me, he said, the difference between robotic assisted and the other method is that minimally in, uh, is invasive, but minimally uh, invasive. He used the word, they were cut where the robot has really predetermined. He can't go deeper than that. Mm. Okay. So that was what I felt very pleasant. I said, okay, get it for all. You see, mm. the beauty is, you see, I was suffering through pain because uh, six years, you know, six years I've been suffering this kind of pain, not able to walk. Even when I come into the supermarket, I have got to look for a chair to sit every 50 meters or so. It was very difficult. And uh, I think, sure enough, after getting the robotic thing done, today uh, I'm here to share with you uh, that if there's any major pain, I think you must seriously consider getting a knee replacement done mm -hmm. by whom you think the best doctor is. Okay, mm -hmm. because you see, unfortunately, in Malaysia, there's only one area with robot, this robotic assisted machine. But in other areas, they have computer aided. So when I first saw Dr. Chua, the first thing that occurs to me is he's young. Second thing, I look at him because as, as a person involved in the medical field, uh, his hand doesn't shake when he saw me. Otherwise, he'll be shaking up all, all my... <laughs> okay. Shall we zoom in? <laughs> he's got, he got very strong knuckles. Very strong, spare hands. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. Uh, Why so, are you giggling? So, sure enough, like... uh, I came in. Okay, so this basically the, mm -hmm. the parameters look at. Uh, In the when I go girl on the theme of their life, you know, to see someone that I actually admire, to love lah. Okay, until today, he still loves him very much after all those things that happened on him. Madam Wong, what about you? You know, like um, Dato were mentioning about the first impression, and uh, he seems like you know very pretty much open widely to accept robotic arm assisted surgery. What about you? When Dr. Chua actually told you about Madam. You have to do surgery already. And we will be doing with this robotic arm assisted surgery. What was your first impression about that? Actually, the first time when I met Dr. Chua, mm. he's very friendly, very <laughs> convincing. Another true love story. <laughs> he gave me a very poor explanation of my problem. He told me of my the hip. do but the thing that I I should do mm. and he recommend the surgery. Mm. Look at him, surgery to me really fine. It really scared me for that. And mm. and he said it's implant some things into my body. But he's very convincing, very confident. He said in three months time you should you will get back to normal. Mm. But true enough, two months now I woke up the up and down, up and down, I travel. Mm. And driving, playing with my children, playing with my grandchildren. But I feel really happy and thankful to him. And he told me that when he when first he told me the, the things robotic, I was thinking robotic. Then the robot will do something on my body. He said no. But then I still very, very frightening and about that. Can tell you when the day I agree to my husband and I agree to the surgery, I cannot sleep. I can do the dental operation room. I still 
He gave me, doctor, gave me a very assurance, no pain. You will back to Loma. Mm. So this is the things that which I agree to the, to the surgery. And true enough, after the surgery, very good. He have no pain and minimum discomfort. Because after, no matter how, after the operation, you sure will get some discomfort because the cut is still there. Even though you have a little cut on your finger, you still feel the pain. Mm. But to me, there's no pain. But discomfort is that it's not easy to move in, get, get up and down. Because the, the operation is on both sides of the hip, like a two zip. Mm. So this is what I feel. And when my Dr. Chua told me all this, mm. but the things nearly happen the same way. Mm. Thank you so much for sharing sincerely. <laughs> you can see it from the eyes. <laughs> Then the cells are, you know, like dancing all over top and bottom of the body. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Wong. She will mention that she will be super kanjong to share, but I think she's doing pretty great, right? And also, <laughs> can I have all of you to give applauses to Dato and also Madam Wong? You know why? This applauses is actually, you know, uh, to thank them for their willingness to share us, to stand up, to share all this and making time and fly over, you know, to, to KL, to PJ. And also another round of Chua. Okay. Uh, the reason why we're happy for him is sharing all this for the sake of you know saving the earth. Okay, it's not that all of you have to consult him, you know, like hundred percent. Ah, you can do it somewhere else. You can only find me, look for me. I only share you when you pay me. No, he's not doing that. Today we are doing all this in free, right? And also, um, he finds it really important for all of us to, you know, like know more about hip and knee pain. And also he's mentioning um not all pain actually needs surgical treatments. You also can do it, you know, accordingly to the non-surgical one. That also that's a myth saying, Are you doctor? Always want to operate us one lah, to earn more lah. Okay, they never tell the truth lah. No what? Okay, he actually mentioned earlier. If you do not need the operation, you do not have to do that. Okay, okay. Can I also have another big round of applause? So, Madam Wong and Dr. because they really, you know, brought up a huge courage for them to take action towards their pain. People normally do not want to go to the doctor. Doesn't mean that they do not aware of their problem. It's because they find it very problematic. Hosusa, very mafan. Ah, what if I go to the doctor already? He tell me I really have to, you know, like do surgery. And I have to go to the hospital, spend a lot. And then after surgery, do you think you can confirm and assure that I can walk? Will my situation get even worse? So I think they actually have much courage on that. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, please. <clears throat> You see, I would like to add a, little, a few yeah. words. Uh, it's my experience is that mm -hmm. I choose uh, these almost of the fierce COVID, this COVID when mm -hmm. COVID has a lot of mortality everywhere. I think every one of us have friends who have, who have gone by or passed by. Uh, so I thought that that's the best time to do so that when the COVID is over, the airlines are back and we can travel again. That was yeah. also part of the scheme. Mm. But you see, we are both maybe very fortunate because immediately after my surgery, okay, I've got no pain. In fact, I, I told uh, Dr. Chua, I said, I have completely no pain. I was discharged on the third day. Mm. Uh, I only used the walker only for half a day on the day of discharge. Wow. After that, I was able to walk. Okay. Initially, of course, I was a little bit careful. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was able to walk quite freely. Yeah? And today, I think if I want to, I can run. If I want to, I can run. The only thing is that uh, I didn't force the issue. I go on slower physiotherapy. Mm -hmm. I allow the tissues to heal themselves. I think part of the healing process is we must listen to our body. You see, this is something. There was no pain. I allow the healing process to take place. Mm -hmm. I do know uh, through some of the patients that I've seen, from, both from the hospital and from also from friends, is when they force the healing process mm. by going for aggressive physiotherapy mm. and everything, I think that actually in a way injures the, the tissue more. Yeah, we should true. always allow and allow age uh, to, 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 to come in 
into yeah. our, uh, our healing process. True though, we should yeah. actually, you know, like follow the flow and every one of us have, you know, our own tempo. Okay, we'll talk much more on the recovery process after that. But right now, Dr. Chua, would you just give us a, you know, a journey towards their surgeries? Like what are the differences and how do you actually do that? Okay, so, so, so for all the patients who come through mm. and then that we decided for us, Book in the slot, that's number one. And secondly, while booking in a slot, you do need a special CT scan onto that particular or that particular limb. And this CT scan, after we obtain the CT scan data, it will be all then sent to a couple of centers in the world, mm -hmm. uh, Hong Kong and US for segmentation. So after they do the segmentation, they will send back a full report for me into what which part of the joint is spoiled and where, what degree that is run off from the normal value, right? Mm -hmm. And from there itself, I could, on the computer, or I even go in the operating theater, plan the surgery for this particular patient. Now, every single patient is different. Every joint is different. So we plan as accordance to that particular joint condition onto how and which part of the bone need to be resect and how and where we're going to put in our implant. And all this pre-planning will, en uh, will enable us to put in the, the, the joint that is specifically, perfectly uh, for that particular individual joint per se. Mm -hmm. So after all this planning, the personalized planning, then we bring the patient into the theater. So in the theater, obviously, like I said just now, Robert is just assisting me. I will still be there doing all the surgery, opening up and put in a little bit more markers and whatnot onto the robot to, 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 to collect all the data, kinematic data as well. So all these things be done and then the robot will come in and do the part where we all want the robot to do, which is accuracy. Okay. Now, why do I say so? Because there are certain things that our naked eyes just cannot see. Okay, the robot will be able to differentiate the things as small as 0 0.75 mm. Uh, it's lesser than that, 1 that's mm. Uh, that's small. Uh, as mm. well as a degree that is off for as small as 0 0.5 degree. Now, all these things, our naked eye, we cannot beat. Now, that's, why, that's when we feel that the robot is a technological advancement that we should embrace because they help us in this part of the accuracy. And last but not least, with the scan done, we can also know where, where are all the important structures surrounding the knee, the ligaments, the tendons, the, the vessels, the nerves, and the robot will avoid all these things as well. So in actual fact, the robot will come in to help us for accuracy as well as safety. Now, what does accuracy entail? The accuracy will help us into a few things. Number one, we put in that particular joint into the perfect place of where the joint is supposed to be. And what will that mean? That, that will mean that that particular joint is for you. For you. And for you to accept this joint that is perfect, the surrounding tissues, the surrounding muscles and the ligament do not need to accommodate so much. And hence, with that, it becomes something like a minimally invasive kind of surgery. Mm. It, because of that, the 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 amount of physical therapies that you need to do just to accept the new joint is much lesser. The ability of your joint becoming like a natural joint to you or what we call a forgotten joint, that mm -hmm. means you forgot that you have a fake joint inside, is much more higher. And last but not least, obviously, is lesser pain, right? And to put to a, to a easier way for us to understand as well, it will also, accuracy will also mean that the joint should last longer simply because for example if you were to look into a car tire if you put the car tire into a correct alignment then the car tire should last and if the alignment is off obviously the car tire will rest out a little bit faster mm -hmm. so that is just to put it in a normal context for us to understand why yeah. accuracy is so important yeah so should it be any ignorant anymore you know like robotic arm assisted doesn't mean robot do all that I, madam wong i am going to do operate on you, things like that. Right? No, don't kanchong. The doctor is there, okay? The robot is only an assistant, okay? To actually help to see more, to cut less, and to keep more. Dr. Charles, would you like to, you know, like tell us more precisely on this? Yeah. So, 
so the like I said just now, the robot helps us to see, mm. help me to see. We have the pre-op scanning. Mm. The robot will already have that data. Intraoperatively, we load the, the the robot with certain data some more. And when we, the robot can see the things that I cannot see, the 0.75 mm and the 0.5 degree, when the robot can help to see all these things, we will so the robot can see the lesser more you get to keep and what oh. you have that is still healthy will not mm. be excised away okay in other words we still keep whatever we can tak rugi you know we just give away what we don't need and don't like anymore okay the rest of the part you can still do it as your own investment ah then you can still go pato pato lah huh? okay okay anyway i just say very short pause i saw uh, many of the q and a's coming in already i just want to let all of you you know on ground or online please stay put with us because at the very end of the session which is going to be the end soon we'll be talking you know like accordingly each uh, to each and every of your questions, okay? So make sure you stay with us, yeah? For whoever that you're having curiosity or you have some doubts or you have any questions, just leave a comment below. We'll be compiling soon, okay? But anyway, comes back uh, to the point. We were talking about the surgery. Uh, right. Why not you tell us more about the recovery process? Um, I bet, you know, and I'm sure when Chua told us um, they've been cutting less on us, which means the recovery process will be even faster also, right, doctor? Yes. Yeah. So uh, comparing to the conventional surgeries that we've been doing, robotic arm-assisted surgeries actually give us a much more shorter period of recovery. So this, no proof from me. We should actually ask the patients. Madam Wong, would you like to share us about your recovery? Or maybe right before that, we can actually go to Dato first because you have a video for us, right? How was your recovery? Oh, oh, look. Oh, that was before surgery on the left. You want to share us a bit? Very sad. One in the hospital room. He said to use my hip to lift the right leg. <laughs> that talk, talk through the yeah, mic. If not, those on. Bad. Mm. Actually, it was very bad. Mm. Chronic pain. Mm -hmm. Okay. And everywhere I go, every time I want to stand up and walk. Mm. The pain is a reminder that my my leg is alive. I cannot walk. My soul is not alive. Yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> okay. What about the second one? That was one surgery. You, you were yeah. with the walker. I was with, with <laughs> walking around. Until Dr. Chua told me, I think it's too far. We have walked too much. <laughs> Never expected that fast, right? Yeah. And this was six weeks post. Yeah, after oh. And then three months, you're working like a normal boss already. I didn't know he took all those and he must pay me for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll help you invoice that with commissions. I'll get yeah. all this. <laughs> okay, you can actually see the much huge difference, right? From the very beginning till the very end. I mean, we all expected, you know, some good results right after the surgery. But so Think about whether I, can. I think there's a beauty of how how my life that all those have been. I think it's worthwhile to consider. Mm -hmm. Worthwhile, okay. While your insurance still hold, I think it's worthwhile. Yeah. It. Actually, both of us are not young anymore. In fact, I just checked. We are actually both the age. We are sixty-eight, coming to sixty-nine. Mm. Okay, so I think uh, not so young because recovery is fast. Well, it looks very young. Uh. Huh? Very young. No. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I think you actually prove us, you know, it's pretty much important to walk the life. You're know, talking about walk the life, you know, we take, take actions of what we want. We, You know, whatever you wish your life to be, you have to work something out of it. And also, another Chinese saying, Hey, okay, don't watch your bag. Yeah. When you cannot walk, you cannot go anywhere. Even you're not ill, so you make yourself feel very ill. And one day you really got ill. So, so that's very pathetic. Madam Wong, your recovery process, was there a happy one? Oh, very happy. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, very happy. Yeah. <laughs> Two days after the operation, mm. I can walk with a walker. 
But of course, I still need assistance to get me up. Mm -hmm. Because my both legs full strength to get up. Mm -hmm. So I need. But then I, two days after uh, operation, I can walking from the bed to the toilet to the, the room. Mm -hmm. Dr. Chua helped to advise every day walking around with walker, of course. Mm -hmm. So I use the walker for three, four, five days. I stay in the hospital for five days. I stay for a hospital for five days, mm -hmm. walking around the hospital every about six rounds every day mm -hmm. with a walker. On the seventh day, I walk without walker. I can get out on my oh. own. One, two, two weeks, three weeks later, I start my walk, walk but short distance now. Two, one month then, I feel myself completely okay. So wow. I do my round morning walk every, every morning. And now is I done my surgery at the end of May. Now it's only August. So two months, I'm walking like a normal. I don't feel mm -hmm. any, anything at all. Mm. But I think my life going back to normal because I do my walking, I do my cooking, I try to work, I play with my grandchildren, and I plan traveling now the world. <laughs> From the first moment uh, <laughs> I saw Madam Wong, uh, she's been telling us, telling us about traveling and all. <laughs> right now, only two months post surgery, uh, where are you planning to go part after this? We actually we have business in China, so we oh. always travel. China, as you know, in China, no walking, no don't do China. <laughs> True. Uh, you see, happy wife, happy husband. <laughs> it's right. Dato. You see, after all these surgeries and you know, witnessing, regretted. You know, you've been dragged process for six years long. Eh. Is it in three months, six weeks already count the murder? Yeah? You see, even the six years, I tried very <laughs> hard to walk. Mm. Okay, I tried everywhere. I will not say uh, don't go. I even went on trips to China uh -huh. uh, with some of the medical professors, and they told me, you know, mm. hey, go ahead, you are suffering. How can you be doing nothing about your knees? Uh, mm. I took all kind of painkillers, mm. and uh, I think to no avail. So when it's time's up, I said, well, get it done once and for all. But I expected to stay in the hospital maybe for a week or 10 days. Mm. But I was there for three days and I back to Sabah and I was able to walk. Mm. Actually, today I'm very happy, man. Eh? In the sense that I will not hesitate to go anywhere. Okay, I don't have worries about whether I'm going to fall. Uh, I've got a uh, weak knee and uh, all kinds of things. You know, So... I'm able to walk without being assisted now uh, mm -hmm. easily, actually, for a long time already. Yes. Uh, so, mm -hmm. I think thanks to modern medical technology, I think things are better. And of course, if there's a choice, uh, definitely uh, this uh, robotic assisted is the latest, okay, if there's a choice. Mm -hmm. But again, I've seen my patients recover in the hospital also quite fast. Uh, Again, depending on the skill of the doctors. I think Dr. Choi is a very safe pair of hands. Okay. <laughs> we shall zoom in again to the fingers. Yeah. I think, I think it's, you see, uh, a uh. good doctor, a good surgeon must have a good pair of hands. This is what I always believe. Uh, oh. They are like artists, you know. So, uh, so he's one of them. Uh. Yeah. So in a way, we are we are very safe that in Malaysia, we have got many, many good surgeons. Uh. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, yes, I think are. we have got many, many good surgeons. I mm. think that's, uh, that's uh, the beauty of Malaysia. Yeah, yeah. That's the real kind words from the, you know, one of the first who have done um, robotic arm assisted surgeries in Malaysia on hip and knee. Dato, yeah. thank you. Madam Wong also, thank you so much. Okay, talking about doctor, I think pretty much, you know, um, other than having a good skills or good hands and fingers and, you know, um, on the, the outlook itself, I think one of the very most important things is that doctor actually got to persuade and, you know, have good communication skill to make patients feel right and safe, right? You're not very hard. Leh. Come, share us more, Madam Wong. You know, throughout so many surgeons you've been meeting, and then uh, by that moment, you see Dr. Chua. And then uh, after done all this, right, is it you can't wait to share, you know, all of this experience to your friends already? Yeah, of course. Uh, Actually, I 
before I went to see Dr. Chua, mm. I went to so many doctors. Mm. You know, just the... Of course, to... Okay. Mm. And also get some advice from the doctor. That's why I went to so many doctors. I went to all over. I even went to Slamban to see the, the specialist. Mm. But it gave me a very short period of relief. And every time... When they they give the, the jab, they call uh, gel replacement. Mm. So to prevent your job, your your bone to get wear out. Mm. But every time when the as the jab, if the relief get shorter and shorter period until with no choice that one of the doctor recommend. So mm. I went to see Doctor Chua. He's very friendly, very professional. He <laughs> give you all the explanation. Step by step, mm. and he give you confident. No, the first thing is after the operation, no pain. That's mm. the one give us a, a very confident and also um, relief. Mm. Because you see, even a small cut in your finger, you also feel pain. Yeah. So how can a so big a cut? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but there's really, and then also before there was surgery, and you have heard a lot of uh, adverse effect. Mm. It's not friend. Some friends, but my auntie, my own auntie itself, he also have a hip replacement, conventional hip replacement. And she got the, after the operation, she complained of pain from the, from the day of operation until the day she died, one year later, non-stop complaining of pain. Uh, but today you were telling us how happy you are. No pain, no pain, confirm no pain. No pain. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that, that was what Madam Wong was telling me. Tell it. Thank you so much. So right now, we would like to, you know, like give both of you a rest first, you know, to be please seated. And Dato, thank you so much for sharing us. Madam Wong also. But Dr. Chua, please remain with us on the stage. Thank you. Okay, next time. The next time I see you, you must run already. Huh? Run to me. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, thank you, Dato. Very happy to see them, you know, like with their happy recovery, right, doctor? Okay, doctor, also mentioning about that, right earlier on, we were, we were talking about, you know, the earliest and soonest you got all this done and consulted, the earliest and soonest your recovery will be. So, everyone has their own tempo, right? Any general activities that you would like to advise, you know, for all the patients? So, so, so in, in general, what, what to expect is the one that we, we are talking about. Okay? So let's say you were to, we were to embark onto the journey together for joint mm. replacement, whether be it knee or hip. We are talking about all my patients will walk the second day, as in today you do the surgery, the next morning you walk, which is within 24 hours, every single one of them. Okay, And I make sure that will happen because I walk them myself. Even oh. after so many years, okay, thousands of okay. patients, every single patient, I walk them myself. I'll see them come down from the bed on the walker and start walking. And I think mm -hmm. that is very, very important to give the patient the confidence. Okay, that's number one. So majority of them, I will tell them, say that you probably be on the walker mm -hmm. uh, to, for as, to as long as two to three weeks time. Of course, we are, it's, it's not a race, it's not a competition. Uh, you are more than okay to carry on with the walker up until two to three weeks time. Um, but you will know when you want to let go of the walker. It is mm. when you feel like you are carrying the walker more than you, the walker is helping you to walk. Mm. Uh, that's when you, you let go. So I like, like what it was shared by the, the couple of patients just now, they, they, they let mm. go of it some at five days, six days, some seven days, right? Mm. But uh, again, it's not a race. You can hold on to it as long as two to three weeks time. And secondly, majority of the time, I'll tell them, say that you will be able to go to a shopping complex or walk around and whatnot at about six week marks. Mm. So that's always the expectation that I give to the patient. Okay, If you can mm. get it there faster, that's, that's by all means good. Mm -hmm. But if not, then just aim for about six weeks. Mm. And for you to be able to, let's say, if you want to plan something to go travel or something like that, just plan it three months after that. Uh, three months normally majority of the time I will discharge my patient as well I don't mm -hmm. see them anymore after three months time three okay. months were like the longest 
as per accordingly to uh, Dr. Chua. But for me, three months is very, 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 very fast already. It's some kind of three months. Lah. So, uh, in short, for me, I think in order to walk extra miles, to do whatever you like to do and to enjoy your life, I think that's pretty much the most important thing is to step on the first step, you know, to have the courage to go see your doctor whenever you have such issue. Okay, right now, Dr. Chaw, would you join me like uh, for the Q&A session, sure, all right? Sure. We've been compiling all these questions uh, from the uh, floor and also from the online platforms. First, s and are you still here? You're from the Zoom, right? Uh, you were asking if there is a knee pain, is it to do an x-ray or ultrasound, doctor? So, um, if you have knee pain, you come and see us. I think the most common uh, investigation that we will do mm. with an X-ray is uh, not so okay. much of ultrasound. Uh, mm. X-ray will probably give us a, a fair idea mm -hmm. on to whether your joint is worn out or not, mm. and whether or not you have some deformity that is associated with it. Ultrasound mm. is a little bit not so not so much of data that you can get from it. Okay, I see. And also from Yap Hong Yi, also from Zoom, you were asking how effective is Vitral S for knee pain and how long to take? Okay, so Vitral S is a brand, mm -hmm. a brand uh, for glucosamine sulfate. Yeah? Now, glucosamine is a type of a supplement mm -hmm. which uh, as of now is shown to have uh, evidence that it will help to delay the mm -hmm. degeneration of the knee joint. Bear in mind, only in a knee joint uh, for the evidence. Huh? So far, not mm. for any other joint uh, just yet. Um, mm. you, you do need to see whether or not your the, your stage of the disease, whether is it early enough. Mm -hmm. The early disease one, you definitely vitral S or the glucosamine sulfate can help. Mm -hmm. um, how long do you take? You take if it is helpful to you. Mm -hmm. I always tell my patient to take uh, two months, stop one month, take two months, stop one month to get the maximum benefit. Uh, we, we call it a drug holiday. Uh, simply because mm -hmm. glucosamine, we also produce our glucosamine from our own liver. Mm -hmm. If you just to take all the exogenous one all by yourself, all the time, what happens is the liver get lazy and start stop producing. Oh. Then you don't get that, that added effect of supplement. So take two months or one month, take two months or one month is quite a, quite a good way to do it. And uh, if it is early enough, it's definitely help to delay the mm. degeneration. Okay, such a good opportunity to ask doctor more questions. Huh? You don't have to, you know, go queue up in the hospital. So take the opportunity right now, comment below and tell us your doubts and questions. Also from the floor. Any questions from the floor? Okay, come. Um, one by one, please. We, we'll start off with the one... The man in orange. Please, yeah. So many of you raise hands there. tong I saw that. <laughs> the first step, you know, to take the right action is to ask. Okay. Hi. What's your name? Emmanuel. Our first question is ask. After the, the surgery, so we take the calcium to replace back? Calcium. After the surgery, calcium. calcium. Ah, okay. ah, to build um, out the bone, nah, to cut the bone. Okay. Second question is, wait, second question is after the implant, implant mm -hmm. it, the bone is already built out the calcium, so the implant take out. Okay. So now, now, now calcium supplement is for bone in general. Okay. Um, if your bone uh, quality is not so good or as you age already that you need some calcium supplement, that's okay. That's in general. It doesn't mean that after the surgery, you need to take extra calcium just to build back the bone. Mm. It, it's not directly uh, uh, related. So calcium is just a supplement for your bone. Sorry, what's your second question again? Second question is, after the bone is built out already, should the implant take out? Oh no no no! Oh. So so okay. So this 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 is a joint replacement. Essentially, it is it's a little bit different from from when you put in an implant to fix a fracture. So sometimes when you put in an implant to fix a fracture, once the once the fracture is united and the implant has got no use anymore, you can take out the implant. And for this, this is a replacement. Essentially, you replace your joint, so we we don't take it out anymore. That is your new joint already. Oh, it will use stay it with for you that until. Time until the very last day. Mm, this surgery, right? You keep whatever you have. Okay, can we have the mic to the next, yeah, the next person first? Okay, maybe I'll start with you. Yeah, what's your yeah. name? My name is Raymond. Hi, Raymond. I have two questions. Uh, 
we, you said you get a uh, hip and knee pain, uh, mainly from aging and uh, on wear and tear. So aging is something which is uh, unavoidable. But for um, wear and tear, should we uh, like stop, stop our activities or, or do less exercise so that our, we get less wear and tear? Oh. Okay. And my <laughs> second question is, uh, when, we, when we actually get hip and knee pain, suddenly our friends and uh, family members all become part-time doctors. Uh. They are, <laughs> so true. <laughs> they will start advising you to go to the TDM or to the chiropractic or to direct to, your, to you an uh, orthopedic surgeon. Yeah? So should we actually uh, don't waste our time going to this chiropractic and the TDM but go straight to you? Yeah? So these are my two questions. Okay. Dr. Chua, of course, go straight to you, lah, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, ve ve very, very good questions. Okay, the question number one, I think I, I get this kind of question all the time, all the mm. time. Now, where and there, yes, we understand. Now, every one of us, aging again, is not something that we can avoid, right? Uh, every one of us will be, will, will be there, you know, 90 years old or whatnot. We will reach there eventually. Now, the last thing you want is to not live your life just to worry about your future. Personally, that's what I think. I think we should learn how to live our life. If you like to do exercise, carry on with your exercise. Because now, joint we wearing of the joint is one thing. There are so many other things that you can can come along with a, a good exercise, a good heart, a good mm -hmm. cardiovascular system, and everything. So, so by all means, personally, I feel we should be living our life. That is one thing that I'm very very passionate about. We should not keep thinking, what if I wear out my, my knee joint or my hip joint, then I stop doing my life. Because then you already degenerate on other part even much faster. So live your life as much as you can. If ever, if the degeneration decided to hit you, that there are, there are treatment, mm. there are things that we can do now. So don't because of fearing your future and don't live your life now. Uh, in Mandarin, again, I, I like to say some certain, sometimes certain things in Mandarin, that is more important. You live the, the day today. If you don't keep thinking that you don't want to live the day today and, and, and then keep worrying about your future, then what's, what's future? Mm. We, we, no one know when and, you know, again, when, going when is next? it's going, mm. going to come. COVID hit us and then we lost our three years, right? So live your life today. This is number one. Secondly, what was the second question? See, <laughs> there are so many, you know, like yeah, doctors okay. around Others, us, doctors <laughs> around us, and everything. Yeah. Um, okay, I think it's not fair for me to comment onto all the other modes of modality, especially if those are not my 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 professionally known to it. For example, people talk about acupuncture, people talk about TCM or TDM, because those part of the knowledge I do not have. And it's not fair for me to say that those part of the those part of the modalities are all useless or not good. No, mm. all I can say is whatever they have here. I we, we doctors we spend years studying, learning on to how to help you all. We will help you with the things that we know. Okay, if you want to come and see us, seek help after we diagnose and we realize that there are modalities or there are ways that we know how to help you, we will suggest and. I think the last thing to do is for any one of us to ridicule any other modalities. Mm -hmm. That is not something that I would do. Yeah, I like that answer. Come, can we have your name? Hello. Uh, my name is S.L. Chan. I want to know the, <coughs> the range of uh, medical costs, uh, uh, different from person to person. Uh. Yeah. Another thing is uh, if I go for the surgery, I have to wear men pampers, isn't it? And then I cannot urine it, I cannot, uh, what pass motion, uh, and then I cannot drive for how long? Okay. Uh, and then what are the suggested exercise after I recover? Okay. okay. Sure. Thank you. So, so, so dif different surgery obviously has got different, different range. So we, let, let's talk about, let's say knee replacement, uh, in a total knee replacement or to uh, partial knee replacement. In the market here in Klang Valley, we, you are ranging from about three thirty to 40,000. Okay. Depending on who you see and, uh, how it is done and how long you stay in the hospital, okay? For total hip replacement, it's a little bit higher. It's ranging from about thirty-five to about 45,000. That's for total hip replacement. Um, 
for for the for the 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 activities that you need to do after the surgery and everything. So for the first time when let's say you were to get the surgery done with me my way because obviously different surgeons have a different different way but the first night when you are on the bed most of the time we will put in a urinary catheter for you so that you don't have to worry so much about the urination so the urine will come out by itself and the next day after i started walking you that's when we will take out the urinary catheter okay you come off the reason why is because by then you will be able So every single one of my patient, after they started walking, they would walk three, four, five, six times, as many as they need to to go to the toilet, to go and pass motion and pass urine. Okay, so they, you do not actually really have to rely on the the adult diapers. Okay, and uh, about walk about now it is the surgery is done right hand side, an automatic car. I must to tell you that you should not drive for six weeks. Okay, the reason why I'm obl- I say I'm obliged to tell you is because your emergency breaking time is going to be slightly lesser or longer. Sorry. Okay, so hence there is a chance that you are putting danger to yourself as well as to others. Okay, for automatic cars, if you are on the left hand side, we normally can start driving. I will allow you to start driving at two weeks mark. And what kind of activities that you can do? You can do whatever that you need to. For the first two weeks or so, you are encouraged to walk. You can go from bathing to mm. toilet to, to 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 kitchen and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, and depending on the patient has a different recovery, you can do more and more things as it goes. Okay. You can. You can wow. once you want to start do treatment. Normally, is about four to six mm-hmm. weeks time. All right. Thank you for the question. And before we go to you, right? Uh, let us okay. Let us just go with you first. The final question from the floor. Um, okay, my name is Patricia. Hello, I'm asking for my mother. My okay. mother is 93. Is there an age limit? Okay. And what about di diabetic patient? Good so, question. Thanks. Ve- very very good questions. Mm. Now, age is a number. Okay, at the end of the day, to us, age is purely a number. Yes, it does. Uh, give us to a certain extent an indication and to how fit this particular patient is, but to us, if the patient is physiologically fit enough to undergo the anesthesia as well as the surgery, age is not a limit. Okay, my oldest patient for a knee, uh, it's eighty seven, was eighty seven, sorry, and my oldest patient for a hip was ninety three. That's my oldest patient. Uh, younger patient, your younger one, of course, it's not really a factor. More importantly, is to look into how fit the patient is. Mm-hmm. Is number one. Diabetes is it a, a factor? Yes, it is a factor. But we all we need is to control the diabetes very very well. Now, I I, I must say, out of my one hundred patient, probably sixty patient would have diabetic, and seventy mm-hmm. five patients will have uh, hypertension to a certain extent. Yeah. Okay. Don't worry about that because, as far as I concern, also specialists themselves they will discuss about your situation and give you the best out of your condition. Yeah. Right. Correct, doctor. Yes, yes. Okay. Talking about that, I think that pretty much answered uh, Chan Siulian's question. Also, uh, is this surgery safe for elderly? Eighty three. Definitely no. Depends on your condition. And she was mentioning about my mother is eighty three. She is suffering from bad knee pain. Doctor didn't recommend any surgery and advise her to lose weight because she is much overweight. So any better advice for her? Okay. Um. First of all, probably it's not very fair for me to answer this mm. just like that without seeing the patient. Uh, the best thing to do is for, of course, let us have a look at you. Mm-hmm. We look through, and then we obviously there are many, many factors that we we consider in inside our mind onto how mm-hmm. heavy you are, how fit you are, and everything. Whether lose weight or not will help with the joint pain. Definitely, we know that. But it's easier said mm-hmm. than done. Eh? It's always a vicious cycle. You will be saying that uh, I I try to lose weight, but now I cannot walk. I cannot walk. I cannot use up my energy. Mm-hmm. And then what do I do? I eat. And I, I spend time eating, and then I don't use up the energy. Then the vicious cycle go on and on and on. Eh, so but make no mistake, the lighter you are, obviously you put lesser load onto your weight bearing joint. Oh, our lower limb, our weight bearing joint, the knee joint, the hip joint, our weight bearing joint. The lighter you are, definitely your symptom is will be slightly better. 
Mm-hmm. I actually had a friend, you know. Uh, he was only 23 by then. And then he has this knee and um, hip problem also because he's overweight. So that that's pretty much the issue also. Everyone should actually take good care of our lifestyle. Okay, uh, maybe one last question uh, from Christine Lian. May I know how long this robotic knee replacement can last for how many years to help reducing the knee problem? Good questions, right? Because many of us would, ah, I spent so much, ah, 30, 40,000 for that. Oh. Shall I do that? Like, you know, another time repeatedly, like after two years or three years, Dr. Mungak Ngola. Okay. So okay. what do you think? So now to answer that question, mm. there are a few a few things that I want to highlight here. Mm. Okay. So this is number one. Okay. Let's talk about purely joint replacement per se. So mm. how do we talk about when when patient asks us how long will this knee joint last or how long will this hip joint last? Okay. Mm. We look into this by registry. Okay. Registry simply means that you know in the whole world, after how many how many joints that will be implanted, we follow them up, right? But of course, in Malaysia, we don't have this registry, but we, we follow the one that is from British, from Australia, from Swedish. We follow them up and see how long that all these joints are going to be lasting, okay? Mm. Now, bear in mind, we are talking about every single joint out there, okay? So, for in terms of the knee joint, we, the cutoff point that we always tell patients is roughly 15 years for a knee joint, okay? Mm. Now, why do it 15 years? 15 years means that you cut 15 years. At 15 years, at 80%, that means out of 100, there are 80 more still running. Lah. But 20 potentially need to be changed already lah, along the line of the 15 years. So say, okay. Now, in, for doctors, we don't play 50-50. Okay? We are not gambler. So hence, we, we, we take the cutoff point at 80%. Okay? So that's when we always tell our patients, say a knee joint will probably last you about 15 years. In hip, it lasts slightly longer, about 20-25 years at 80%. Mm-hmm. Okay? It's total in terms of the knee. Mm. Now, the next question, the next thing that I would like to answer is in terms of robotic, whether or not robotic can help to last longer, like I said just now, because of accuracy. Now, robotic has been around in the world not long, longer than six to seven years yet so far. Okay. Now, in terms of total knee and total hip, the robotic services that we have in the whole world is probably around six years. But even with the six Six years, six years. We realize the revision, so called the rate as in the G drop. So, if we were to postulate, essentially it should last longer. So, whether how long it is, we do not know yet because we do not have the track record to tell you just yet. But from what we look so far, it has been very, very promising. Now, last but not least, one more point that I want to raise here mm. is about whether or not do I want to delay. My, my joint surgery to much mm. later, it is only 15 years and whatnot. Now, this is a concept where it can it could have been imparted by the earlier years of our joint replacement experiences. Now, those days, the technology as well as the technique is such a way that we are not so good in terms of doing revision surgery yet. So hence, many people would think that you only have one chance for one joint. Okay? Do one time and that's it. And if that joint spoil, next time that's it. No more, no more chance, right? And hence we delay. We say, okay, life expectancy for a male uh, 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 in in Malaysia is about seventy five years old, or for female is eighty years old. Then you you just calculate back, say fifteen off like that, and then you should wait until then. Then only you start doing your surgery. So those are those days, okay? But today's day and age. We have the technique, we have the technology to do revision surgery. We can do the second revision surgery. That means the old one, take it out, put in a new one. The third revision surgery, the fourth revision surgery, the, the highest revision surgery that I've ever done on a hip was the sixth time. Okay. So, so hence, it tells us one thing. It tells me that when I con- counsel my patient in terms of joint replacement per se, is that when you have the pain that is not fulfilling your lifestyle, get it done. Okay, don't think about all the rest of the thing so much anymore because we are capable of doing the revision that is number one. And secondly, with the advancement on our technology now, with the betterment in terms of the material, we are getting all the impact that is going to last us longer and longer. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Chua. Okay, can I have a big round of applause? Big, big round of applause. 
for Dr. Cha. Thank you so much for joining us. Okay, I shall actually send you off the stage. Thank you. Okay. Um, have a rest. Some fools I talked so much about you know the topic today. And for the rest of you, okay, can we have the slide, please? You know, showing Dr. Chua's face one. Everyone took this name down, Dr. Chua Hua Sen. Okay. okay. If you have any questions, if, if you need station, yes, take out your phone to snap it, screenshot it from your live stream. Okay. Take this name and whenever you need consultation, you can always opt for Dr. Choi in some medical center, okay? And in short, if you actually notice and aware of your pain on the hip and knee, don't wait no more. You know, go for consultation because do not need to be afraid of that uh, because once you consult already, it doesn't mean you really, you know, must go to surgery. Sometimes we might have another option and whenever you don't need to be, you know, operated, doctor will actually tell you so. Okay? Thank you so much for joining us today and let us just flip back to the, uh, you know, the front page so that we know what are we having here today. Thank you so much. Stay safe. Please fill up the survey form if you can, scan the code or if you need uh, offline, you know, printed papers, always uh, look for our right here dr chua thank you dato thank you man i'll be seeing you guys soon maybe shortly or not soon so that all of us can get healthy do not need to see dr chua okay. thank you so much guys have a nice day bye bye that is life up thanks